Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be quickly running you through the Kia Nomad. So this is going to be a quick rundown video and brief instructions on how to use this. So, so now that we're outside, I'll run you through on everything on the outside from the lockers and everything. So coming over here, we've got the toilet located here. And if you notice, I use the gold key. So you'll be using this key for majority of the lockers. So this is where your toilet is. Always make sure to close it on the inside. When you want to pull it out, lift that green handle. And then this whole thing just pulls out. And this is only dumped at an authorized dump station. This I don't dump it at an authorized dump station. There's plenty of videos on that if you're unfamiliar on how to do that. Your flush water is filled over here. So it's normally just filled to the top over there. Your gauge is over here. So you can use a pink rinse in there as well uh, in combination with fresh clean water. So that's where you fill up your fresh, fresh water for your flush. Your dump valve for your grey water outlet is over here. So you have to remove this cap here and plug in your grey water hose. I'll put up a picture now so you can see that. Grey water is just over here. All you have to do is undo this cap, connect up the grey water hose and just Again, you must only do this at the authorized dump station. Coming over here, we've got a 240 volt power lead. So this just pops open. That point there, you want to use, you want to lift this up like so. Slot that in there, like so. And just push it in. Inside, you'll have a plug like this. Just lift that up like so and plug it in and that automatically starts charging the battery and you can use your microwave and all the 240 points and you plug in your lead over here and then you just hang your lead on this hook here so it takes the slack off next we'll come over here to the gas bottle you're going to use this gold key turn it like so and you can open the gas bottle and you will need this for your gas hob, your barbecue, and your hot water cylinder. So over here we've got a shut off valves as well, if you need it. You, these can stay in the open position, but if you're hibernating the vehicle for some time, you can close off all the valves, and they're there in case of an emergency as well. And always remember to turn off the gas bottle before going for a drive, or before moving campsites, and if you're away from the camper, always turn that off. It's very important. We'll leave that on because we're going to turn on things on the inside now. So this is our gas hot water heater over here. If you want to double check if it's on on the outside, just run your hand up and down here. You should feel hot air coming out. Sometimes on a windy day, the wind can go blow up in here and blow out the flame. So in that scenario, you just want to turn it around so that it, this side doesn't face the wind. You, know, you might also notice some water might start dripping out when it's finished its cycle, when the water's hot. That's normal. Um, so that's just the overflow for the hot water cylinder. That's perfectly normal. Coming around to the back. This is normally where your table is stored for the front area, the cabin area. So that's where that table is stored. That's your gray water hose in that black bag. And this is your fresh water hose. And finally, we've got a table here at the side. I'll show you where that goes. It's quite a nifty design. And you've got a little extra storage. You can fit fishing rods up there in that storage area there. That's long enough for um, fishing rods to go there. So we'll always shut that door first before shutting this door. Coming around to this side, this is where the barbecue is located. Again, just use that gold key. It pulls out and you got your valve that turns it on and off over there at the back. And that's what your barbecue is. So you will need a lighter to light up the, the burners underneath it. 
So when you're done with this, you can just close that, make sure that locks, and just push it in like so. And then just shut this over here and lock it. You've also got a light up there. So that light is for your barbecue. I'll show you what that switch is when we go inside. And finally, this is where you fill fresh water. So fresh water is the only different key. You need to use this key here. And that's where you fill your fresh water. Also, your spare tire is located there underneath in case you need access to it. It's just a wing nut system that just drops down. There's a separate video on that if you want to see how that works. But if you've got roadside assistance, you shouldn't really need to worry about it because it's quite difficult. Coming to the front here, this is where you fill diesel. In order to fill diesel, you've got to open the passenger's door. And the tools are located there, which we'll cover a bit later. So when you open this door, there's two locking positions. That's position number one. And position number two is, you just keep pushing it. And it goes right to the end. So this is the additional table, or the outdoor barbecue table. To remove it, you need to unhook that like so. And it just slots in there, and then you just pull it out. You've got your table pole here, the leg rather. You have to just press this in like so on both sides, lock it in place, and it just goes in the rail over there. It slots in like so. You get the idea. It just slots in there like so, and then that's just meant for your barbecue, and it's your little outdoor table quite a nifty design so when the doors open that's when you use it now stepping inside this whole front area I will cover a bit later in the video because it can vary from uh, model to model coming here is where we have a dining area where you can put a pole over here and these seats wobble around and it, that table at the back comes here and this is your single bed that folds out here so to turn this into a bed what you need to do is you need to remove this couch here so this basically just pulls out that pulls out and then you come at the back here unclip this handle unclip that handle like so this just comes down and then this just folds out. Like so, and that becomes your single bed. That's your bed board that's used to make that whole rear section into a bed. You can even either leave it there or you can put it at the back where the other table is located. Your fuses and everything else is located underneath here. So this is where your battery charger is, charge controller, and diesel heater. So this, all this will vary from model to model. This vehicle has got a lot of accessories installed, so that's where it's got dual batteries and a few different things. But this is generally where everything will be. And again, depending on your model, you'll, leave, you'll have two USB chargers down there and a cigarette light socket. So a cigarette light socket over here where you can plug devices into. And this is your main isolator switch. And here we've got our RCD switches and circuit breakers over there. When you plug into power, sometimes that could be off. So that's worth checking and worth noting. So this is your main control center over here in these Kia Nomads. This is your volt gauge over here at the top, your tank monitor, 
your radio over here depending on again depending on the model you might have bluetooth you might not and all your switches are up here so now that we're in here and we open the gas bottle outside we'll turn this on when this red light goes off that means the ignition is on of the gas hot water heater so that means the gas hot water heater is on so whenever you see this red light on on this particular kia nomad I don't know if you heard that so that's it on at the moment when it goes to a dim amber that means it's on if it's a bright red that means there's a fault you can see my other video if you have any problems with that water pump turn that on when you turn on the water heater lights fairly self-explanatory so you've got one circuit there that controls all your reading lights and you've got this circuit here which is your main lights over here at the top Range hood, so when you turn this on, that basically turns the range hood on and also your ignition for your gas stove, your three burner gas hob over here. So it's on, if you never used the camper before, it's got a safety feature. So when you hold it down like that and light it, keep holding the knob. So you've got to hold it for about 10 seconds, then you can release it. It's just for that little isolator there to heat up. That's just there as a safety system. In case the wind blows out the flame, it cuts the gas supply so that your camper doesn't fill with gas. So that's something worth noting. Always make sure this is cold before closing this, gas, uh, this lid. The fridge is controlled independently through the switch over here. To the thermostat so if you want to turn it off you basically turn it like so and then turn it to zero and that turns it off you've got a little freezer box over there so when you're not using it or after a long trip when you turn the fridge off you want to basically slide this underneath here so see how it says close at the moment you want to put it to vent so slide that there to vent because you don't want the fridge to base to close you want it open like so Otherwise, moisture will build up and you'll get mold building up in the fridge. And when the fridge is completely dry, then you can put it back to the closed position and close it off. But that's something worth noting. Always make sure you leave the fridge open when it's off, especially after long trips, so that moisture and mold doesn't build up in there. Close that and leave that in there. This is your sink over here and your water tap. Sometimes when you open it, I'll open it now and show you. Um, when you open the tap and when you close it, if the water pump doesn't shut off, that means there's air in the line and you just need to let the taps run. So here and in the shower area, just let it run until all the air comes out. So just like that, it should your shut off so you got your hot side and cold side coming back to the control center so that covers that range hood switch the media switch here controls the radio and it also controls the TV so when you turn that media switch on you can basically turn on the TV Sometimes, this TV is really a USB and a DVD player only. So you can plug in your DVDs and stuff like that in there. So that's that. When you're done with all of this, make sure you turn everything off. Always turn everything off. The only thing that can stay on in this camper when you're not in here or if you're traveling is the fridge otherwise apart from that everything else goes off the microwave and all the 240 volt outlets will only work when you're plugged into power and you've got plenty of storage everywhere i don't need to cover that that's fairly self-explanatory there's a roof vent over here at the top you just basically turn it like so and that opens it 
Always keep that closed on a windy or rainy day. Don't leave that open. You've got rear doors which you can open if you really need to and a side door. So just keep that in mind. Coming to the bathroom area. Now when you want to use the toilet flush, you want to make sure you turn on the toilet switch over there. The light switch for the bathroom is just here. And your shower head is here. So the shower head's got two settings. This setting here, when it's pushed in, is basically a constant flow of water, which I'll show you now. So with this setting here, it's a constant flow of water. And when you pull this, like so, when it's got that little gap there, now it's a shower. It basically turns into a shower head. So that's how you convert that from a tap to a shower head. And when you're done with that, it just goes back up there. The toilet, as I mentioned outside, that lever over there, the black lid, it's controlled via this. So if that's in the open position, you cannot eject your toilet cassette on the outside. So always make sure that's closed. And if you want to use the flush, just push it like so with the toilet switch on and that'll work. Always make sure to close that toilet before driving. And there's some instructions here as well. If you forget about the toilet switch. So we'll close that now and we'll shut this off. We'll come back here and turn off everything. So make sure you turn this off independently because this toilet, this shower light over here is controlled independently from there. So if you leave that on, it'll stay on. Something worth remembering. These seats are fairly easy to use. You just have to pull them forward. Pull them forward like so, and then you pull this lever like so. So pull this lever this way, and then this seat just swivels around to become into your little dining area over here. The pole that goes in there is located underneath here. So that's where that pole lives. That goes to the front. And on this side over here, we have a safe over here. It's just a standard key safe, just there. And your rubbish bin is located underneath there at the back. While driving, make sure this is tight. This table shouldn't be too loose and make sure this is tight as well. You can either leave it in this top position or you can remove that pole and it basically just lives it lives below there underneath there's hooks for it over there if you want to take off this rear table it just goes so the leg goes there and the table can stay here or go at the back where i showed you earlier and here we have another access door so you can access anything in the rear section Apart from that, if you have any questions, just refer to your manual that's provided with your camper. So you've got two manuals. You've got the Kia manual for the Nomad and you've got the Mercedes manual, which is normally located in the glove box. Your diesel heater control is over here. All you literally do is just turn this knob and you'll get hot air coming out from there and from the bottom there as well. This is an optional extra that won't be fitted to any other camper unless you opt for it. Basically, when you turn that on, it'll go through its own cycle. The light will come on and it'll activate in, in several minutes. It's basically, this diesel heater pulls diesel directly from your tank located underneath there. So that's all automatic. You don't need to worry about it. Once it starts up, you can dial it down to whatever temperature setting you want. Fairly straightforward. And if you need to access your start battery, it's just located underneath here. So where your tools are kept, just underneath there, just over there. It's just good to know that. You can hear the diesel heater running. When you're done with it, 
after some time all you do is just basically turn it off it'll take a few minutes it'll run through its cycle cool down and then it'll turn off automatically also take note of where your fire extinguisher is located this particular one has it here behind the seat so just remember that that's quite important to remember and also the folding handbrake which we'll cover a bit later and also don't forget your height always refer to the manual for your height and your width and your length that's my quick guide of the Kia Nomad that's basically everything covered here and just one last thing is on the outside I'll show you how you can wash the windscreen that can stand up on that step because sometimes it's quite difficult because these campers are quite high so over there is your step where you can stand and wash your windscreen and I'll be covering the extras if you opted for any extras um, a bit later in this video so keep watching and you'll also see a bit later in the video the updated uh, Mercedes front cabin area if you've got one of those as well um, the little subtle differences on how to use it compared to on one of these just in case you need to refer to any of that make sure you, you create a checklist of things to run through before um, you take off from your campsite or before you move from one place to another place things like close the tops on there make sure all the doors are closed properly make sure any outdoor chairs and stuff are put inside make sure all the switches are off here make sure the gas bottle is closed on the outside that sort of thing just make sure you remember all of that whenever you park up at a campsite always make sure you park on a level spot because there's a couple of things you want to be parked on a level spot so the water drains properly in the shower area the water drains properly in the sinks and also it benefits the fridge as well to be on a level ground so that's that's something to keep in mind if you need to use the ramps you can buy these from super cheap burns and so on and so forth so always, always bear that in mind you want the camper to be level it's good for you as well when you're sleeping um, it helps everything so you'll see the pictures now of the ramps and stuff like that and it's quite important to know that so coming to the front cab now of the Kia Nomad you'll notice that it's a similar design for most of the Mercedes Sprinters only you have if you have the 2019 onwards um, it's a little bit different at the front here but we'll cover that a bit later so with this particular model we've got a folding handbrake over here and that's something quite important to keep in mind so that folding handbrake allows you to swivel the seat so I'll show you how that operates when it's in the activated position do not touch that front button when you want to drop it down all you have to do is just literally just push down just push down like so as long as you don't touch that front button it'll stay activated so then we can come back here pull this that handle there when you pull that handle we can um, basically swivel the seat and you might need to sometimes pull the seat forward so in order it clears the door cards and stuff like that but that's basically what that is for so that's quite important to remember when you're done with the swivel seats all you want to do is you want to just pull it and it just locks into place like so always make sure you do that now here coming to the front depending on what model you have um, you either have this uh, touchscreen system here or you want um, just depends on what was fitted as an optional extra so with your key here on this particular model you just put it in here that is position one where the radio and everything comes up position two is when the ignition lights and the glow plugs and everything get activated normally leave it for about eight to ten seconds in the morning just so the glow plugs activate and with your foot on the brake um, all you have to do is literally just turn that once and it starts up your headlights are located over here so this is your park lights and this is your low beam and when you want to go to high beam you've got to come around to this side the stock over here this controls your wipers and your high beam indicator so all we need to do is if i pull this down so you can see it just push and that activates your high beam for the wipers just turn it and that turns on the wipers and when you want your sprinklers just push in so all you have to do is literally just push in like so 
and that activates your sprinklers. This, I'll turn this off so you can hear me. This over here is your limiter and cruise control. So when you want cruise control, you just pull, so pull back once. So say you're driving at 50 kilometers an hour, just pull back once, that'll activate cruise control and you'll notice your speed will come up on the dash. To adjust the speed up and down, you either go up or down and to cancel, you just push back again. For the limiter, what you want to do is, I'll put on the ignition so you see the light come on. So now the limiter is off there. So when the light's not on, it's off. When you push it and that orange light illuminates, that means it's activated. So it activates from whatever speed. So say you're traveling at 40 kilometers an hour and you don't want to exceed that. When you're at 40, all you do is just push that and that activates the limiter and that switches on. So that's straightforward. Uh, it shifts just like a normal automatic car. So you just put your foot on the brake and you can put it in reverse. That'll activate the camera if you have that fitted. Neutral, and then you can put it in drive. Well, if you want to shift it manually, then you can basically put it in drive and then just go left to shift down, right to shift up. And if you're in the manual mode and you want to go um, back to drive, all you do is just keep pushing this until you come to drive. Okay, so coming back to the handbrake, see it's still in the lower position now, the folder position. So if we pull it up with our foot on the brake, you want to lift, so you want to pull this up, then release the button, then the handbrake will go down like so. And when you activate it, you should hear the clicks. So then you know that it's properly activated. So just remember that tip. When you want to fold it, do not touch the button, just push down. But when you want to deactivate it, pull it right up, pull first, then push the button in, and then release it down, like so. So coming to the main control center over here, these are your just your um, adjusters for your different modes. So your front, uh, blower vent, lower, upper, that's all fairly straightforward. This is recirculation. So when you want your AC to recirculate, you just push the AC and then you push that to recirculate. This is your fan speed. And this is your heater controller over here. Your cigarette lighter socket is over here. You, know, you can use it to charge your phones and stuff like that. So you've got one here. This one is switched through ignition. And you've got another one down there, but be careful of that one because that's um, permanent power. So if you plug something in there and you forget it, you will kill your battery. So keep that in mind. That's quite important to know. If you've got this particular type of um, head unit fitted as an extra, you can basically connect it to your phone. Um, so you can hotspot your phone data to this for navigation. Or if you're at home, you can your Wi-Fi um, system. So all you do is hit that. And you go through there and um, run your Wi-Fi. For your navigation system, you have to initially connect up to your phone hotspot or a Wi-Fi signal in order for it, for this to initially load. I've got another video on how to download offline maps and stuff like that. But if you've got one of the new latest smartphones, um, usually the smartphones are a bit quicker than this. But if you didn't want to use the navigation system, all you have to do is connect this up. So I'll just quickly show you this. So all you do is pull down there, go there. Hold this there, and that goes to Wi-Fi. So you want to turn on Wi-Fi, and you want to connect it up to either your hotspot, your own home internet, or something similar, or public Wi-Fi, or whatever. Um, in the, when you have internet, this will all load, like I said, and then you can init initially start using it. But you would want to download the offline maps, which you can see in my other video. The rest of it is fairly straightforward. Um, you can play around with the Bluetooth and all that. That's quite self-explanatory. Apart from that, um, there's just the tools in this section here that we have to cover in the front cabin. So just over here, we've got our factory Mercedes tools and hydraulic jack over here. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so that's to allow you to access the spare wheel at the back. You need these tools um, in order to jack up the vehicle safely. Another thing, depending on your model of Mercedes Sprinter, 
you'll have these buttons over here these basically just allow you to scroll through the different menus work quite well for example when you're when you want to make a call once you're synced up your phone to bluetooth you just basically push, push that button and then you can go control the volume pick up the call hang up the call you can run through all of that and change any of that if you want to so if you want to change your menu over there in that screen you just use these buttons over here and then you, you can cycle through all the different modes your odometer your fm settings and so on and so forth if you want to go in depth on what all of that is just refer to the message menu which is normally stored in your glove box over there so that's where that is another thing over here at the front um, this one here basically locks if you look closely here you push that once it locks everything locks all the doors you push this here at the back it allows you to independently lock and unlock the rear door and then to open the doors you basically when you pull the handle it'll, it'll allow you to exit and it'll open the door your mirror adjuster is over here you can only adjust the top bit of your mirrors through here your blind spot is manually adjusted so once you set that you leave it it's permanently set left and right straightforward this is your headlight dip switch so it allows you to set the angle at which your headlights point on the road so the higher it is um you just basically want to try to keep it low so you don't blind oncoming motorists and finally coming on to this side you might notice this red light over here that red light is basically when you're plugged into power if you forget to unplug that'll uh, emit a loud buzzing noise just to warn you that you're still plugged into power and that you need to disconnect others you'll rip the lead off at the campsite or if you're plugged in at home or similar so that basically covers everything here at the front like i said if you have any questions or if you're not sure of anything just refer to that manual over there it's quite good it's very in-depth and it's got a lot of information um, that'll simplify a lot of things and also one last thing if you in case you're curious this is just a paper clip holder so you can just put your papers underneath here you can put your checklist underneath here so you just make sure that the power leads out um, you have steps and all your outdoor chairs and stuff like that that's a nice place to keep it so as i mentioned um any questions just refer to the manuals and i hope this was of some help to you thanks for watching everyone see ya if you have opted to get an additional inverter fitted it's normally mounted here at the back because we found that this is the best position so when you have your inverter here you can basically run your extension wire or extension board from here to the top here and it'll basically allow you to use your table here at the front the little dining area and you can plug in and keep your laptop over here but if you choose to work from the back you also can just run another extension wire from here to the back it just makes things a little bit more convenient so if you've got an inverter fitted onto your one as an optional extra what you do is you basically just turn it on there literally there's nothing to it and then you can watch the output power so it's very straightforward, nothing complicated about it. It's just like a home switch. So you'll only get 240 volts from this socket if you have this type of an inverter fitted. The rest of the sockets that you have located over there will only work when you're plugged into 240 volts. Similarly, this goes for anyone else who doesn't have an inverter system fitted. All these points here will only work when you're basically connected up to power, including the microwave. It'll not work until you're connected up to power. So another thing worth mentioning with the inverter you don't want to use this with any high current devices it's only meant for charging laptops plugging in tvs sound systems that sort of thing check with your manufacturer check with the specs if you've got an e-bike and you want to use that for an e-bike to charge that because sometimes the e-bikes also draw a lot of current so you want to be very careful in that as well so you definitely don't want to be plugging in things like a microwave or any heating devices into that inverter so anything that's low current low draw um 240 volt will work with fine with that inverter so that's just something to keep in mind and when you're done with the inverter always make sure you turn it off so just flip that switch there when you turn it off like so then not drawing any uh, power because when you if you have it on and nothing's plugged in it will draw a little bit of standby power so that's something to keep in mind if you have an awning fitted as an optional extra on your kia nomad what you need to do is you need to use this pole 
over here put it in there at the top and basically unwind it till about this height here once you reach to this height that's when you want to start pulling out these legs over here so the legs are held in over there so all you have to do is just pull these legs out like so you fold them down and then you just put them down in the ground and then when you're done they just basically clip into there make sure it clips into there make sure this part is pushed in over here similarly over here make sure that's clipped in there and make sure that's pushed in there as well so make sure both those two are pushed in and then you can go ahead and wind it back in there's plenty of videos on how to use the Fiamma F80 or F6, F65 only. So if you're not sure, this is the model number in case you're not sure. If you just Google that, if you're not sure how to use it, there's an instruction manual as well in the camper if you're unsure on how to use it. But try and always put it away when it's raining or if it's a windy day, do not use it. Just a safety precaution, it's just only a sun awning and you should only really be using it on a sunny day. So that's how you use that particular awning. So coming to the front, I'll quickly cover the basics on the Mercedes Sprinter. So this is a keyless system. You can normally just leave the key here. But if for any instance, if the key doesn't really get picked up here, because I've got spare keys here at the moment, so it can get confused. What you do is you come underneath here, just to that slot there, in there, and you just pop the key in there, if you ever need to. That's what that is. It's a keyless start. So what you want to do is just keep this key in here. Put your foot on the brake and then just push the start button. That'll start up um, the Mercedes Sprinter. To move the vehicle, you need to put your foot on the brake. Make sure it's always on the brake. This is your shift column over here. So we move this down for drive. Move it up for reverse and push it in here, push this button for park. Everything else is self-explanatory. Your indicators are on the left-hand side. Your wipers are over here, so just turn that knob and that activates the wipers. And these are your sprinklers. Just push that and then that activates the sprinklers. This is your blowers for your front AC. This is your blower speed. AC buttons here, temperature, hazards over here and to change the direction of the blower self-explanatory so to turn it off just push it down and that's how you turn it off to switch off the vehicle put your foot on the brake and just push this button once when the vehicle is running um, it's got an electronic park brake over here which is activated from here so pull it to activate it and disengage it light switch is here your shifter column is here wipers are over here so at the moment i have it plugged into power so that's good it warns me that i cannot start the engine but i'll just run you through this touch control system so this is a touch sensitive system all you do is just scroll through it and it will run through the uh, different menus and finally this is your cruise control so all you do is when you're driving you just push it up to set it and it'll automatically hold that speed but remember, it's not um, active cruise control, so keep bear that in mind. And this is your limiter if you need it, and then you can just cancel it. The full Mercedes manual is normally located there if you ever need more info. These have factory fitted swivel seats. So to use the seats and swivel it around, you need to move this lever here. So when you push that lever, you might have to pull your seat forward as well. So if you pull your seat forward, this whole seat just turns around and then this becomes your little lounger. So that lever there allows you to move your seat forwards or backwards. And that lever there is basically for the rotation of the seat to turn it around. Just feel free to refer there to the manuals, either your Mercedes manual or your um, provided manual with the motorhome.